Hello, it is March 27th, 2023. This is Jason growing in his backyard orchard in zone 10B in San Diego County. And I'm going on an orchard tour today. I wanna to document what my orchard looks like here at the end of winter, beginning of spring. There's quite a bit growing. There are new things in the ground. There are old things that are flowering. There are buds breaking and, and all sorts of activity. It's a very exciting time for the orchard and I wanna share where we are right now so that I have some sort of benchmark to work off of in future videos. So where I am right now, I'm on the west side of the property and this is what I consider to be my service entry. I uh, built this fence and I wanted to create a straight line going all the way across the property uh, because there's a high side and a low side and I just liked creating that straight line going across. So by the time I got all the way over to the low side of the property, my fence had to be pretty tall. And uh, because I didn't want to go all the way up at the gate, I created a sort of transom there. I know I'm on the reverse side, so Fletcher Farms is in, back, is, uh, in reverse. But the gate that I built has two parts to it. One part is fixed and the other part is the active side. And if I need to get something large like a wheelbarrow or some large material here, I can open up both sides. Um, directly next to this gate is my shed slash chicken coop. I'm gonna do a video on this at a later time, but just know that the back side here, the back one third of this shed is dedicated to the chickens. I got little baby chicks who are hanging out here. They are learning how to be chickens. They, are, um, they were introduced to the outside uh, for the first time this past weekend. And they're doing really well so far. They're getting picked on a little bit by the older chickens, but they're adapting, they're adjusting, and um, so far they're loving life out here in this nice 75 degree day that we got. So let's actually check out the orchard. Now, uh, this was an undeveloped section of the orchard that did not have a whole lot of activity going in it. So I have planted some tropicals because they get afternoon shade. And so right here in front, I have a Brewster lychee that I got from a tropical nursery up near Los Angeles. Uh, I visited them. I think I picked this one up, but I've also ordered things by mail through them and uh, It's not doing a whole lot right now. There is some new leaf growth that's coming in, but this was a cold winter and uh, I'm actually just impressed that it's still alive uh, After some nights where it dipped down into the 30s, but nonetheless, that's my lychee and then I have some new additions over here, these were mangoes that I picked up from Home Depot. They're manila mangoes, they're seedlings, and I'm hoping to put them in the ground, let them grow for a little while, and graft to them. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna add onto them yet. I have plenty of time to research, but these two are mangoes, uh, specifically manila uh, seedlings. And then I have a, another mango over here. This is an Alfonso. It's leaning a little bit. We had a lot of rain, and the rain has caused it to droop. I have to support it a little bit better. But the Alfonso, um, from what I read, it has a hard time growing here in Southern California, but I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna see how it works out. And if it doesn't work out, you know, I'll uh, replace it. But if it does, Alfonso is supposed to be delicious. As I come over further, I have uh, some seedlings, some uh, loquat seedlings that I picked up from my local California rare fruit grower organization uh, club meetings. So I have two of those, and again, my plan is to graft onto those at some point once those become a little bit more established. Uh, next to that, I have my dragon fruit row. I have a total of 12 different types of dragon fruit growing. They're all in pots, they're all trellised in the way that has become extremely popular. I'm hoping that these uh, redwood and cedar posts that I used are able to withstand the constant moisture that's accumulating there in the, in the pots. Uh, but we'll find out. I know some of the folks who've put these up on YouTube a couple years ago, they're starting to redo their design or rethink their design because their posts are starting to rot out. So we'll see how much life I get out of these. This particular one right here, these are, um, these are dragon fruit that I got recently within the last several months. I let them root in a pot and now I put them in a larger pot to, uh, to take off upwards. And then the other two pots, these were a little bit more well established in the sense that uh, I had them in pots last summer and they've grown quite a bit, although the amount of rain and cold that we've gotten has uh, caused a lot of rust and um, rot in some of the stems that I've had to trim back. So they're looking a little shabby right now, but they'll rebound. Over here, I have a guava tree that I again got from that tropical fruit nursery. That one uh, dropped a lot of its leaves, but it's starting to come back. If you look closely, you'll see we've got some success 
there uh, with it rebounding. I have a new black sapote tree here in the ground. I'm really excited by this one. Um, I gave it plenty of space. I'm gonna let this one go pretty big because I'm going to be able to see it from the house and it's gonna help block out the neighbor's roof line on the other side of this fence. So I'm gonna let that one go, whereas some of the other ones I'm gonna keep a little bit more compact. Um, these two trees don't have leaves yet, but these are my two persimmon trees. And I recently grafted onto one of them, or both of them actually, with a, with a, a scion on each tree. So this is a Fuyu persimmon, and behind it is a Hychia persimmon. And then I have a coffee cake scion on one of them, and I have a chocolate scion on the other. And uh, hopefully those scions take off. They've actually pushed through the parafilm already. And they are ready to uh, to start growing for the season, whereas the rest of the tree is still dormant, although those buds are swelling quite a bit. As I come down here, I have my deciduous tree or stone fruit row. I have a series of peach and apricot trees, apriums in the background. My Saturn peach is still flowering, and it hasn't pushed leaves out yet, but it has a wonderful shape, and the, that vase shape is... Uh, Maybe not so apparent now that the leaves are bare, but that one, I love the shape of that. There's an avocado tree here that um, also had an open center, but because it was so open, the center got so sunburned. This was a tree that was pretty neglected when we moved in, and I've had to paint this tree uh, multiple times since we've moved in, and the bark keeps peeling off, and when I cut back branches, half of the branch is dead, and the bottom half that is uh, sheltered from the sun is still alive. So this thing has taken a beating. I trimmed it way, way back. You can see there's three big clumps, four big clumps of leaves, and uh, hopefully those leaves can grow in and provide some shelter for the rest of the tree because this thing just gets cooked in the summer. Uh, one other deciduous tree that I did not stop at yet here. This is a new planting from this past bare root fruit tree season. This is a August Pride, which helps complement my uh, mid pride and uh may pride and and one other i can't remember which one exactly right now but they are permitting me to have successive ripening in my peaches uh well through the summer so i'm excited by that and i've got two little peaches that i'm gonna let grow even though this is a new peach tree i typically pull those those peaches off i've got two because i'm just curious to see how it tastes uh one of my favorites that i brag that uh, is apparently pretty dis divisive as far as flavor is concerned, is the Spice Z Nectar Plum. First off, it's an absolutely beautiful tree. These red leaves, I would plant this in the front yard um, if, it, if I was allowed to. But I love the way it looks when the red leaves come out. And then, of course, I think the fruit is just absolutely outstanding. I am so excited to get more of these this summer, and I can't wait to share because I, I think I'm going to have some converts uh, within my friend group uh, once they try these. All right, so let's continue down. Again, I've got a stone fruit row here. Once these fill in, it creates a nice little canopy where I'm walking right now. And uh, that canopy will just get bigger and bigger as the trees mature. So this right here, this this is apricot, it is a uh, apricot that has been with us since our old house um, in San Diego. And it has been transplanted multiple times. I moved it a couple times at the old house. And then of course I trucked it up, bagged it up, trucked it over and brought it to the new house when we moved. And it's a gold kissed apricot. And I'm not crazy about the flavor, but I also uh, haven't really given this tree a chance to thrive. It has been moved around and, and uh, replanted so many times. Now this is finally its, uh, its forever home. And I'm going to hopefully enjoy the apricots this year. I do have a graft over here. It's actually my very first graft. It's a Blenheim graft. And you can see there's tons of fruit on just this one little scion. The graft is down here. This was my very first graph that I did. It was uh, my first successful graph. And um, because of that reason, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that one. So I'll probably revisit that and check that out at a later time. Um, I have two apriums. They do not require cross-pollination, but they do better when they have other apriums or, or apricots in the area. So I planted them all together and uh, I did a two-in-one, sort of a modified two-in-one here. It's not a true two-in-one as... Um, as would be recommended by like a Dave Wilson backyard orchard culture style because there's about two feet in between trees. And um, I'm just gonna keep the, the middle part open and I'm going to allow each of these trees to occupy their respective 180 degrees. 
and we'll see how it goes. So I've got cotton candy on one side and I think the other one uh, is a flavored delight or let's see. Yeah, flavored delight. So we'll see how those go. I'll be able to compare them side by side. There is fruit on both of them. And so I'm excited to, to try those out. Um, behind me here, this used to be where there was a overgrown mulberry that was weeping over. It had been pruned up at the top and then it, it uh, wept over a fence that was sort of haphazardly uh, surrounding the mulberry. I took that whole thing out. First off, it, it was just prime real estate and the mulberry just, it was just too messy and it was just taking up too much space. It wasn't what I wanted. So here's a three-in-one jujube planting. I've got sugar cane here in the front. It was a little bit smaller, so I put it on the south side of the orchard. And then in the background, I have Lee and Lang. And uh, I also have a grafted sugar cane on the, which one is this? On the Lang. So I wasn't really impressed with Lang, to be honest with you. Lee was my favorite. That's the a more oval-shaped jujube. The, the Lee, I, I uh, just, sorry, the Lang, I'm sorry, that's the one I'm looking at right now. The Lang, I just, I just wasn't impressed with it. It just didn't do anything for me. So I'm gonna slowly convert this over to a multi-grafted jujube, and I'm gonna hopefully start with the sugar cane. I'm really hoping this took, because uh, jujubes take a little while to wake up, and I grafted this all the way back in January or early February, so that's a long time to, to sit there on a tree that's still dormant. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that um, that one takes. So as I come over, I have another uh, avocado tree. This is yet to produce avocados, although by the looks of it here, you can see there is just a ton of flowers. So I mean, it's growing profusely, and it always looks great, but it just um, hasn't given us any fruit yet. It didn't have any fruit on it when we arrived, and it hasn't produced any fruit yet, so it's not even an alternative bearing issue. Uh, down here, I have a what was once a two-in-one cherry plum, but I lost one of the grafts, so I'm letting the rootstock grow out. The rootstock is this one here on the right-hand side. And then on the left-hand side, I think this is Sprite. All right, there's Delight and Sprite. No, I'm sorry, this is Delight. I lost Sprite. So hopefully when this rootstock grows out, I'll try and graft Sprite one more time, and that'll be a two-in-one. So this was a tree that I grafted at a um, California rare fruit grower meetup that um, you pay like five bucks or, or 10 bucks and you get a tree and some scions to graft up. So that's what I chose and hopefully that'll take. Uh, here's a pear tree. I actually had pear scions and I didn't have anywhere to put them. So it was bare root season and I, I bought a uh, pear tree. This uh, was the biggest impulse buy I have ever done when it comes to fruit trees. Normally I'm pretty methodical, but this one right here has multiple scions grafted onto it. Um, and we'll say including seckle and hood. The actual tree itself is a Florida home. And um, it's here in this corner that, that uh, I don't want to get too big because it'll shade out some of my other trees. So I'm gonna keep this guy nice and low and uh, we'll see how that goes there. Over here I have got my, my plum and pluot alley. They're flowering, they look beautiful right now. Uh, I've got three pluots. I have an espalier weeping Santa Rosa along the fence. That might be a little hard to see right now because it's mostly just sticks and stems, but it's starting to flower and leaf out. It's gonna look great. And then I have my cluster of three pluots. And uh, these pluots, again, they're, it's not quite a three-in-one planting, but they're close enough together where um, I'm gonna have them all grow out in their respective directions. And then I'm going to keep the center open. All right, so I also have some figs. I picked up these figs and rooted them um, last year. And this one is doing pretty well. And my other two are, are not necessarily doing so well. So if these don't take, I've got some figs in the wings in pots that I can easily swap out. So uh, hopefully these wake up. Um, I don't currently have irrigation to these, so that's my fault. So if they don't make it, it's probably on me. But I'm giving it a try here. And then as I come over to the fence, this was a, a pretty ugly bare fence that I have since espaliered three apple trees on. So I have a King David right here with some chip buds that I've grafted that uh, will hopefully take because the chip buds are uh, Sundowner, which is the sister apple to the Pink Ladies. And 
I love pink lady apples. I have Anna in the middle, that's fully leafed out. Tons of fruit on that guy. And then I have winter banana in the background that's just starting to wake up right now, so that's exciting. Um, before I go, I do have one more tree that I planted this year right here. This is the uh, Pluary. And um, the tree itself, I think it's called Elephant Heart. And uh, that's the tree. And then I grafted some additional scions on here, including a chip bud that I hope will take, although it's not looking too promising right now. The rains that we got recently have uh, kind of wreaked havoc because they've just absolutely flooded our trees. Uh, so this is a flavor punch scion right here that I grafted on and it's doing really well. You can see all the leaves coming in. Uh, is it elephant heart that's on here? Elephant heart is the, the tree itself. Um, that I'm grafting onto and then right here if I can get my shadow out of the way is a um, Flavor twist I believe it is No flavor punch uh, Sweet treat. I'm sorry. That's a sweet treat Chip bud that I'm hoping will take and you can see it did push out some leaves But those leaves have since browned a little bit so fingers crossed. I haven't lost it entirely, but um, it's not looking too promising. I did some backup graphs, but those unfortunately those are not taking either So I, I might be one two three. I might be uh, 0 for 3 here on the chip buds Hopefully I have more success on the apples. All right, so I'm gonna continue down here This gate is going to be replaced and it's going to match more with the rest of the fence But that's a project for another day, but as I come down here um, I have my three-in-one cherry planting I have my dog Juniper in the background who patrols the fence and chases the chickens um, I have a mini royal, a royal lee, and a royal crimson. The royal crimson doesn't like to branch out. Uh, it did this to me last year where it's, it's not quite a whip, but it is just one stem and uh, has leaves up and down it, but it doesn't like pushing out branches. I don't know why. I'm going to have to see if that's typical or if I just have a weird one. Mini Royal is doing fantastic. It is nice and full. And then the uh, Royal Lee is, is slightly behind. They have flowered out, and I do expect to get a small handful of cherries this year in the beginning of May, and I look forward to that. I haven't had these cherries yet. Um, I did have some cherries at my last place, but they did not survive the transplant. So um, I've had cherries for several years, but this might be my first year that I actually get to taste them. Um, over here, this we don't know exactly what kind of citrus tree this is. We think it's a Valencia, but this was here when we arrived and it needed some TLC and I'm still um, training it to grow upwards rather than just sort of collapse on itself. So there's a lot of supports and a lot of pruning that I've been doing to get it up and off the ground. Um, and so hopefully it's doing a lot better, but hopefully there's uh, more success ahead. I have uh, three more citrus here. I have a kumquat. I have an unknown lemon tree, possibly a mire, but it was broken off at the stem and um, there's additional growth. It's, it's on the scion, it's not on the rootstock, but there's a lot of growth down low since that break and I'll probably select the strongest ones and graft to it. I think that's going to be a, a multi-grafted citrus tree by the time I'm done. And then I do have an actual mire back here. And that I know is a mire. It was tagged when we arrived. And um, I actually recently transplanted that. That was over by the mangoes, or where the mangoes are now. And I um, relocated it closer to these citrus trees. One, to make irrigation easier so that I can create a zone over here. And two, uh, I wanted it out of the way because I wanted the space uh, on the other side for the mangoes. All right, so as I continue around, you'll see there's some more pretty well-established mango, uh, sorry, avocados. I have one here, I believe it to be a Haas. Uh, same over here, you'll see that this guy has lost a lot of its leaves, but there are tons of flowers. It'll leaf out again real soon. There are avocados on this one, they're delicious. And again, I don't know exactly what kind of avocado, but the bumpy skin makes me think it's Haas. And then it gets nice and dark when they ripen up. And if I can find one on the tree, we've been picking them off pretty readily here and eating them. Yeah, here we go. Here's one. So uh, suspecting that that's a Haas based on the skin and uh, the color that it takes when it becomes ripe. So delicious nonetheless, even if I don't know exactly what they are. Uh, I have some more citrus over here along the fence. This citrus tree I planted. This one is a... Forgetting all my names here. 
This is the uh, page mandarin. Yeah, so this is a mix between, I think, a sweet orange and a, and a tangelo. Uh, I might be getting that wrong, but I know there's a little bit of tangelo in there, and I love tangelo. So I actually have a tangelo tree along the fence outside of the orchard, and anything that has a tangelo flavor or lineage in it, I'm all about. Uh, this is a Satsuma mandarin. It um, experienced a real funky fungus or something. The, uh, the trees were rotting right on, uh, sorry, the fruit was rotting right on the tree. And uh, that was a real bummer because my kids and I, we really enjoyed coming out here. So hopefully next year it'll be a little healthier. We'll see what happens. Uh, directly outside the fence, I've got two ice cream banana trees that survived the winter and are putting out new leaves now that the weather's warming up a little bit more. Um, have some bougainvilleas here by the entrance. I'll do a whole video on this uh, entrance that I created with the stairs that come down and the gate that I created with the little pergola on top. That'll be for another day. Uh, so again, if we continue, we got a another Valencia tree, a Valencia orange tree. That one did have a tag. I know that's a Valencia for sure. And again, this one was in such bad shape. There were tons of leaf miners, which is cosmetic, but then there was uh, a lot of scale and, and powdery mildew, and uh, I put Tanglefoot on the bottom of every single citrus tree, and it has seemingly overnight cleared up the issue. The ants were just um, parading up these trees 24-7 and bringing some really nasty things up there with them. So uh, our trees are looking healthier. The oranges are not quite ready to pick yet, at least not this year's crop. Um, but they're getting there. I'll probably have these ready to go by the summer as uh, that's what Valencia is known for. I have this beast of a pomegranate tree over here that I have turned into a Frankenstein pomegranate. It has, it's a wonderful pomegranate and it has um, four different grafts on it. And uh, I'm going to attempt to pronounce two of them, although they, they seem to be of Russian descent, so I'll probably say it wrong, but my first graft over here is a Desertney that had good reviews. It was available. I got the Scion for free during a Scion event at my California Rare Fruit Grower uh, Scion Exchange. I have a Desert... Serenyevi is the other graft. So these two over here, I pruned back the pomegranate quite a bit to allow some space for those uh, Scions to, to take off. Um, this was early on in my grafting experience and uh, I definitely grafted way too far out and if I could do it over again I would have gone closer into the tree uh, but hey live and learn and maybe once these grow out I'll take a scion off of here and uh, or, and I'll take a cutting off and, and uh, graft a, that scion on closer to the inside of the tree but in any case the pruning back to give room for these scions has actually been a blessing because now the fruit that does come out on this wonderful are probably twice the size. We're talking softball size, grapefruit size. Um, so the fruit is a lot larger, even if we got less of it, and they've been really delicious. They've been really good for juicing and just eating fresh. Here is a graph that I just did this past winter. This is a um, Eversweet, which is supposed to have smaller seeds. I'm excited by that. Uh, I don't eat the pomegranate seeds, so if I could get a, a variety that has smaller or seemingly non-existent seeds that would become my uh, default favorite and then over here this one which I grafted last year is my Parfianca and it is doing really well it's cool to see the different colors on this uh, as compared to the wonderful but I'm sure at some point they'll all just blend in no fruit on any of the grafts at least not that I've seen yet and that's okay I want them to become established and strengthen up a little bit uh, if I flip around, I've got my two nectarines. One is in full bloom right now, and that one will uh, will will be enjoying some fruit off of this one. But the other one that's leafed out already, it has uh, I've thinned this one already, but it probably has a couple dozen nectarines on it. This is a Arctic Star nectarine, and then this one is a Double Delight nectarine. And um, one thing that I'll go over in more detail at a later time, it's that I've tagged every single one of my trees with these metal plates. They're great because they rely on indentations rather than ink. The sun out here is just uh, so intense that uh, anytime I write on any tag, it fades before the end of the season. I'm looking at my tag here, I'm seeing that my chickens went to town on this. 
it's been pecked at quite a bit, and I think that's kind of funny. But I can still read it. So I always put the name, the, the, the variety. I put what kind it is. So in this case, it's a nectarine. And uh, I, I write down the date that I planted it. And then I also write down the rootstock. I keep all of this in an Excel sheet uh, It's as a backup, but it's good to have this information right on the tree. So in this case, this is a nemagard. And um, that just helps me when I'm planting trees that are on the same rootstock because this guy right next door is on a nemagard as well. And um, so they, they're just more compatible if the rootstocks are the same. So we've got two more in the orchard. And this one right here, this is a variegated pink lemonade lemon tree. And um, it took a beating again with all those ants. And I did some tangle foot down at the bottom. And I also put an ant trap next to it as well. That's what that little green thing is in the soil. And I've really been able to control the Argentine ant population, which was just absolutely destroying all the new growth and uh, causing a lot of fruit drop. But now we've actually got little fruit on here. This is the first time in a year that I've got fruit, so I'm excited and it hasn't yellowed out yet, so it's still hanging on there. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing that variegation, those stripes that this uh, citrus tree is known for. And then finally, my last one, this one, um, I used to have two of these and uh, the other one didn't make it. This one was barely hanging on last year. We had these in pots and the pots were on either side of our driveway at our old house. So we brought these from the old house. I know, I moved citrus. Um, not great but they were they were my citrus trees and um, I didn't know what I knew at that time but now I know better so sorry in advance but I did bring this over I planted it there has been no signs fortunately of any uh, citrus psyllid uh, as far as the leaf color or fruit color is concerned so it looks like I didn't do the right thing but I, I at least got away with it and uh, it's got some little fruit on here this is a tango and it's another mandarin that will ripen during the winter that will help me get to that successive ripening goal that I am working towards with all of my trees. So this was a, a real quick orchard tour. I think I covered just about everything. I might have glossed over some of the avocado trees just because I don't know a whole lot about them. They were here when I arrived. And um, aside from telling you that they've either given me fruit or they haven't given me fruit, I don't know a whole lot more about them. So... Uh, that is our orchard in a nutshell. It's uh, approximately, let's say, 100 feet across by maybe uh, 65 feet deep. So multiply that out, that's however many uh, square feet. It's a pretty big orchard. It's a lot of space. And uh, there's plenty of room for our little trees to grow. There's plenty of room for our big trees to thrive. And I look forward to sharing more videos with you about some of the things I mentioned here and some of the additional things that are outside the orchard that have made working back here more enjoyable and more successful. So this is Jason signing off from Zone 10B in Southern California. Thank you so much for watching.